beloved quad then. We've got quads and light hams. One exercise of hams in the end of the quad workout. Just warming up here on extensions. When we warm up, the key is to literally warm up, not just the muscle, but bring your body temperature up. You might even break a sweat and you will fatigue a little bit, but you don't want to tire yourself out too much. And the goal is to send the neurological signal and send blood to the muscle you're training. Your body doesn't know it's leg day. So you just walk into the gym, start pushing heavy weight. You're going to use every muscle to move that weight. But when you focus mentally and get a pump and get blood flow to that muscle, it makes it much easier and more efficient to activate the muscle throughout the workout. So that's the goal when you're warming up. You want to start with the leg press? Sometimes if I'm feeling tight, I'll do some light stretching in the mid middle of my warm-ups. But I always get asked the question, when do you stretch, before or after training? You never want to stretch static stretching, holding a stretch for a prolonged period of time before you train. Because a relaxed, stretched, elongated muscle is the opposite of what you're doing when you're training. When you're training, you're tensing and shortening the muscle. So, Stretching before training can lead to injury. You want to stretch after you work out. Aids in recovery, brings blood flow, blood flow brings nutrients. And also after you work out, you're so warm, you're more pliable. So it's a great time to stretch. Thank you. Thank you. Ah, uh, yeah, hopefully. I see. <clears throat> so throughout the year, something that's changed for me a lot with leg training is my range of motion and my technique. I've always been a full range of motion guy, ass to grass squats. And I always recommend that for anyone getting into weightlifting, because in the beginning you want to do full range. You want to fully develop the muscle and learn the, the uh, appropriate form. But over the years, trying to get my quads up, my quads were like my weaker body part, in my opinion. I realized that stopping 90 degrees or doing half the rep was really stimulating my quad more. Because when you go all the way down on a leg press or a squat and the quad is fully stretched, it's weakened. So if you're all the way down, that first few inches is gonna be hamstringing glute. And that's great, there's nothing wrong with it, but it's not getting all of the resistance to the quad. So that's what I've been doing the past year, and it's actually a lot harder for me. I realized going all the way down on squats, half squats, or on leg press was easier for me. So stopping at 90 degrees, or even sometimes less, was activating my quad more, and it was harder. So. Just being something different and challenging myself has improved my quads a lot. That being said, I've told a lot of you guys about my, my TFL hip issue pain that I've had. So I've been working around that and trying to avoid anything that, that hurts. But my point is, is that what's textbook and what you're supposed to do isn't always the right thing. So you gotta really pay attention to how you feel and what's working for you. Five more. Ooh. Let's go, five. I got it. Ooh. Ooh. 
love this machine, so it's a little easy for me. Uh, luckily, I have no pain. <laughs> so, thing with the legs and me, like, you know, some people they have the connection with the mind and muscle, like they don't have to work on it. It just come by nature. Like I had big legs, always had big legs. So I think because I feel them more, it's not like a visualizer or something. I just close my eyes. I just focus on like flexing my leg, like we flex on stage, like we flex. It's just I'm flexing. Every rep I'm flexing. Keep the core tight, breathe in, push. Push hard, go heavy. Right there, right there. I have a question about the log books. Do you recommend you use it or what's your say on it? I do recommend it. In many, many years I didn't use it, but I had, my workouts were so short when I did the high intensity training that I always tell you guys about, the heavy weight, low volume, that I knew what I did last week. And I used to do the same workouts week after week after week. A lot of guys think you need to change to shock the body, not really. If you're pushing hard and you're increasing every week, reps or weight, you're fine. So logbooks are good to track what you did in the past so you could go and look. And also so you make sure next week you do the same or heavier, same weight or more, same reps or more. A lot of times you forget, maybe it's one or two reps or five pounds lighter. So it's good so you make sure you're progressing and always beating last week. So that's what's really important. Dorian always did that. Dorian Yates has logbooks of what he ate and what he what weight he pushed every day for his whole career. That being said, I don't recommend you guys coming into the gym with a fucking duffel bag and a book this big with calculators. Every time yeah, I see no someone like that, right now. just it's really disrespectful to everybody else and you're taking up too much of your fucking time. So either remember it and write that shit down after your workout or put it in your notes on your phone. Just copy and paste last week's and just tweak what you do differently. But it's good to keep track. But if it's taken away from your workout, no. I think a lot of the younger guys these days, too much fancy shit. The glows, the gears, the duffel bag. <laughs> just fucking train. And one more thing, like, like you said, like you, you don't change your workout that much. No. So people like, I have clients, you have clients, like they tell us, they always ask us like, oh, change our workout. It's been like a month, only like a month, they get bored with the workout. They want to get their money's worth. Like when I have a new client, I always send them a voice note, like a few minutes long, explaining everything. And if they, they really need a new workout to feel better, I'll give them one. I tweak things, but there's only so many exercises for each muscle. I'm not talking about the million fancy variations. Just the meat and potatoes, biceps, back, shoulders, legs. We all pretty much do the same shit with some variation. You pick a couple of exercises that feel right for you, that are hard and intense, and you feel good, and you stick with them. You could swap here and there. You could change the order yeah, like we of do, the exercises. Like one week we might do go heavy on bench press, and next time we will go we be heavy on like incline. Yeah. Just change the order a little bit. Yeah. But like I did incline, flat, and dumbbell flies for chest for about 20 fucking years. And, we are the and best my chest is one of my best body parts. Yeah. It's not what you do; it's how you do it. That's got to be my my motto, my catchphrase. I say that all the time. I gotta make underwear with that shit on it. Let's go. Easy. Breathe. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Come on. Good, come on, 15, go for 10 more. Let's go, push, breathe. 
Breathe. Come on, come on. Good shot. I didn't do much. Uh, now I was about to do 20. <laughs> Come on, let's go. Tight. Pull. Yep. Everything tight. Yep. Pull. Go. So today we're mostly doing presses. Most, uh, usually we don't do squats. We either we do this one horizontal squat. We might do this, or we do the hack squat. But today we only do only gonna do the presses. We just did one, the regular press that we have at every gym. Now we're gonna do the horizontal. Then after this we jump into the vertical. Vertical is his favorite now. Right, Ross? Yeah, because. Fucking do seven plates. Anything that doesn't hurt me. I just, my quads is like working around the pain in my TFL and hip. So it turns out I tore, I had a tear in my labrum on the left side and my glute. I got an MRI like about a month ago. So it's unfortunate, it sucks, but I've been doing my best. We had some, several good weeks of leg training, but when I got, closer to the Olympia, more cardio, and pushing harder, lower calories, it started hurting a lot more. And uh, I do the spin bike at home, it's convenient, but I realize it's, it's aggravating it. So now I started doing stairs the past week, it's helping a little, but it just sucks, man. For you guys that are injury, pain-free, seriously cherish that shit. I see a lot of guys just being lazy and slacking, but there's nothing wrong with them. You don't realize how good you have it until you start having some wear and tear and you got to work work around it and park your ego at times yeah, we don't we don't do squat or anything like that but we make sure like we work every single part of our leg like we make sure our whole leg is pumped yeah it's a big big question do you need squats to get your legs big yes and no if you train adequately correctly good form in other areas no you could get your legs big without squats that being said i squatted heavy and squatted every week for 10, 15 years. I just stopped squatting really heavy the past like four or five years because of my hip issue. Dorian didn't squat, but if you watch him train, the intensity and control he trained with on leg press and hack squats is more than 90% people do with squats. So again, it's not what you do, it's how you do it. If you squat half-ass, you're better off not squatting and squatting and, and doing leg press and hack squat at 100%. thing you guys don't see when people are training you just see the weight and you see the ease but you don't realize what the person's doing so I can be lifting 20 30 percent heavier on everything you see today but the focus I put on my legs and on my feet make the world of a difference so here the width is not so important for quad sweep or ham it's height when you go really high on leg presses, it's more hamstring. When you bring your feet down, it's more quad. So my feet are at the bottom of the platform. I'm lowering with my heel, pausing for a millisecond and pushing up with my heel. If I just push and muscle the weight up and use my toes, the pressure comes from other areas. But I'm focusing on keeping the tension on the outer sweep. So before I even got to, I don't know what it was, 10, 15 reps, my outer sweep is on fire. So you wanna keep the tension on the area that you wanna train and just keep it in that range. So you're not really resting at the top and bottom. 
And where you put the weight on your feet is fucking so crucial when training legs. Just a warm up, bro, come on. All heels. Come on, Vicky. Good. Good fucking set. About six. How you feel? Feel all right. It's been a rough year with the injury. It's been hard to click with the training. Like I haven't taken a month off in over 10 years. I haven't skipped a beat since 2014 when I started competing. So I got a couple of bumps and bruises, some aches and pains, and I'm all or nothing. So not being able to train at 100% mess, messes with you. Like this leg workout for me, I'm doing my best, but it's like 70% of what I used to do. So it's difficult, you know? It's difficult when you can't give 100%, it affects you. So I'm taking it day by day, I'm doing my best, but it's been definitely a rough year. I'm never, I'm never close to my weight cutoff. I'm 230 right now, which is pretty decent. My cutoff is 215. Usually I'm like two weeks out, I'm about 225, which is always a problem. That's another frustration for me. I don't like to drop 10 pounds in a few days to make weight because it affects the way my physique looks. Last year I was peeled and depleted at 225 and I looked great, but I had to suck down 10 pounds, make weight, and then when you go back up in weight with water or carving up, you don't always look the same, you know? Fighters just want to rehydrate and perform. They don't care how they look. But when bodybuilders cut weight and go back up, we have to make sure we go back up and look the same. And that's really, really tough. I think 2020 Olympia was my best package ever. Most well-rounded, conditioned, small waist. But pre-judging, it didn't show. I didn't look that great because my body was still rebounding and from that huge weight loss that I had to, a day and a half before a cut to make weight. So it's tough, everybody's gotta do the same thing. Some guys don't have much weight to cut, so I can't complain, I just have to adjust, maybe try to lose some muscle this year. Uh, I know it sounds crazy, but it is at the end of the day muscle mass because it's, I don't have 10 pounds of fat to lose the last week of a show. The focus on the pump, that's it. Keep going, one, two, three, four, ah! push, five, come on, hold, six, beautiful, ah! come on, strong, Ooh. Ah! strong, ah! push, ah! yep, last one, five more, come on. Breathe, push, one, two, keep going, keep going, keep going, good, good set, bro, two, so for all those who train for like two, three hours at the gym, bro, you think you can train like this, like this intensity for two, three hours, I don't think so, so workout is short, it's like an hour and that's it. Go hard, go full, go intense, full intensity, and that's it. Come on. Last set, bro, last set. Let's go, push it. Leave nothing in the tank. Good. Come on. Come on. Push. You got a couple more in you, let's go. Five more. Push it. Focus, focus. Two more, two more. Come on. Good. You know, 
You see the range, right? If you guys doubt it, the range of motion. I'll put his IG profile, go look at his pictures. He's been training with this range for years. And go look at his quads. If you showed me this range of motion three years ago, I'd say, oh, they're not doing it right. But I've noticed a huge difference in my quads, striations in my outer sweep and denseness. But just look at his legs. I think it's more about like where and how you feel the muscle. Like everyone has their own range of motion. But the problem is you tell people that and they're like, okay. And they do something half-assed, they do something wrong, they go, oh, it feels right for me. At the end of the day, mechanics is mechanics. And what I'm saying is when you stop at 90 degrees, if you squat down and you stop at 90. It's really hard. For me, it's harder. And at the end of the day, regardless if it's easy or hard for you, you're utilizing more of your quad. If you squat and your ass goes down to your heels, you're utilizing for the first few inches more of your hams and glutes. Nothing wrong with it. But if your goal is to really annihilate your quads, I would stop at 90. Yep. Just quads. You know, I used to do this feet closer and it never felt good. I go feet just wide enough where I feel the tension on my outer sweep and 90 degrees. And obviously you want to clear your midsection and have it be comfortable without your ass lifting off the pad. So if done properly, especially at the end of the workout, it's constant tension on my outer sweep and it just fucking finishes them off. I've only been really doing these for like the past two months religiously, you know? You go through phases, like certain area exercises feel better. You get into a groove, you get into a rhythm. I've been pretty much doing the same leg workout, except we do hack or pendulum. This week I had way too much pain in my hips, so I didn't do the pendulum. But usually the pendulum, which you could show them in a minute, is like the pinnacle of my leg workout. We go pretty heavy on that, and it takes the place of a squat, but there's no lower back stress. Push! Push! So you see like I always have my hands on my knees or my legs, right? So I, I'm not pushing, I just control the negative. So I don't come down too fast. It's not even like controlling. It's just, I put my hands there so I know, go slow. It's not the push or it's not the, I, I'm not doing anything with my hands. It's just the muscle mind thing. Light, easy 15. No, warm up two, three sets, whatever's needed for the beginning of the workout. But after that, just go into the, jump into the sets. But if I'm going really heavy on a new exercise, sometimes I'll ease myself into it with a set of 80%. That was too light, but if you guys are trying to train at 100% and go heavy, every time you do a weight that's 70%, you're just weakening yourself. You're not gonna get stronger, bigger, or grow from it because it's what you've been doing week in and week out. It's not a new stimulus. So what you're doing is weakening yourself for that heavy weight that's about to come that's gonna make the difference, that's gonna make you grow. So that's why I've always been an advocate of warm up, warm up, warm up. Maybe do one or two reps at 80% to get your nervous system ready for the weight and then just go heavy. Pyramiding has its time and place. It could be good for beginners, but it weakens you. Oh. Uh. 
Big. Yep. Sit all the way back and pull. Stay back there. Toes up. All the way up, all the way up. Yeah, right there. Come on, keep that ass down. Pull. Pull. Last one. Last exercise, last set. Let's go. Keep going, Vicky, all the way up. Toes to the ceiling. You feel that difference? Yep. <laughs> when you're talking about the high intensity training, this is what it comes down to. As a professional athlete, like a football player, soccer player, becoming efficient is awesome. Because if you're efficient at running, you don't burn calories, you don't fatigue during your game. As a bodybuilding or a bodybuilder, fitness enthusiast, you never want to be efficient at anything because if it becomes easy and efficient for you, you're not growing, you're not burning calories. You can become efficient at walking, jogging, high reps, moderate reps, doing all this shit. It will never be easy or become efficient at sprinting and high intensity. Heavy fucking weight, explosiveness and sprints never becomes easy, it's always difficult. So it's very, very hard or almost impossible to adapt to that and become efficient. That's why it always works. And that's why if you look at sprinters and boxers and athletes that do explosive movements, they look like little mini bodybuilders. They all look like they're on anabolics. Very hard, very round muscle bellies, very muscular and ripped to shreds. Whereas you see a lot of competitors, bodybuilders, bikini competitors, do an hour and a half of cardio, training for two hours, and they just look flat and soft, not muscular, not lean. Think about that, there's a reason for it. And I just told you why. What time is it? I'm having the hardest time breathing today. <laughs> so take vitamins and get home. Do you feel that at all? No, I just feel. It's tough work. What you guys want to pay attention to on hams? We're just doing one exercise, four or five sets. Get blood flow. Help recover from the last ham day. Not enough to annihilate my hands because we do it tougher days. You guys look a couple videos back, we did a ham, hamstring day. But one thing you gotta pay attention to is your knee in correlation to the end of the pad. If my knee is too high up here, my whole leg comes up and I use too much of my body. My knee hangs over and I make sure to only use my hamstring just like a bicep curl. And you wanna keep your glutes tense and your body stable. Too much movement here is not only gonna aid and take away from your hamstring, makes it easier, but also puts pressure on your back. So I make sure to get real stiff, hold onto the handles, brace my core, and only use the hamstrings. This is very difficult if you do this, but if you guys wanna try, when you do the flat one like there, kinda hump the pad. I know it sounds funny, but flex the glutes and push your hips into the pad. Then curl. You're gonna be about 30 to 40% weaker but you're gonna be only using your hamstrings. It's pretty much one of the best ways to isolate the hamstring and not using glutes and lower back. Uh. 
Come on, Vicky. Easy, come on. See how big his quads look from behind? Bariara. Say hi. <laughs> I gotta be sneaky. Yep. So that was it, full leg workout. And for all those who've been saying like, I cannot do squats, this and that, no deadlifts. So this is the workout you should do. And we mostly did presses, but hardcore, like no easy weight. Did some warm up with the leg extension. Then we went like all in. Yeah, if you can't tell, we're done. <laughs> it was tough, tough day for me. A lot of, a lot of aches and pains. Normally what we do is a couple sets, two to three sets, warm up with extensions, moderate, lightweight. Uh, about 20 reps. We do a leg press, then we move into the, you know, the, the pinnacle of our workout would be a hack squat or a pendulum. This week we just did three different variation of presses. So over the past, I'd say two months, we've been doing a leg extension, two presses, and a pendulum or hack. So really only four exercises. We come back to the leg extension at the end and we'll do two to three heavy sets to count it as an exercise, not a warm up. Um, and with that, with the high intensity and pushing really, really hard, I've been annihilated. So it's not, it's not the quantity. It's not the, it's not the number of exercises. You don't need to do six to eight exercises. Honestly, six, seven exercises is kind of the average that I see people doing for legs and back and even sometimes shoulders and, and chest. If you guys are doing six to seven exercises, you're probably not probably you're not training at hundred percent. You know, you want to do six exercises? No problem. Come, we'll do six. We'll see how you feel after the second. If you train with intensity and control, you're going to be really shot after your second exercise. Third, you're going to be almost 80% done. You know, so you guys got to train with intensity. It's not so much how much you do and what you choose to do, but how you do it. You can do leg press for your whole leg workout. If you train intense with good form and, and, and you go slow, you're gonna kill your quads. Whereas you could do six exercises and not even kill your quads because you're not training properly. So again, I keep on saying this. I've said this 10 times in this video. I've said this on my social media. I say this to my clients all the time. It's not what you do, it's how you do it. It's not about like just moving weights. It's just, it's, I always say like flex the muscle. Like whatever we do, like chest, flex, bicep, flex, legs, flex. We flex with the weight. If you cannot flex without weight, you cannot flex with the weight. Listen, I wish that wasn't the case. Weightlifting is fucking easy. Picking up weights, throwing them around, heavy weight, it's easy. When you start moving weights and you start trying to pose and flex, flex your quads at the top, that shit is hard, it's not fun, it burns. You know, weight that you can do easily for 25 reps becomes really hard to do 15. So focusing on the contraction, going slow on the negatives, flexing and squeezing. I'm not gonna lie to you guys, this stuff is, is not really that fun all the time and it's difficult. Most guys come into the gym, like, oh, we're having fun. They just throw around weight, they get a little pumped, they get stronger, they feel good. 
and that's fine, but we're bodybuilders. And most of you guys that are listening to this are bodybuilders, even if you're not competing. What I mean by bodybuilder is you're training for changes in body composition. You wanna mold your body, you wanna look a certain way. You know, I, I was a bodybuilder for 21 years. I never competed. I consider myself a bodybuilder. We're not training for weight. I'm not trying to curl a heavy weight or do a power lift or train and um, compete in power lifting. I'm training to sculpt my body. And you gotta think, you have to think like an artist and a scientist of how, what you can do to be the most efficient and get yourself looking the freakiest you can. How to get your shoulders bigger faster. Is it just lifting heavy weight or is it certain forms, certain exercise? And this is what I try to talk to you guys about and teach you in my videos on YouTube and Instagram on exercises. It's, uh, it's really tough. It's not always so easy. Like the leg extension squeezing at the top and, and flexing like you're flexing on stage. It's really, really hard. You guys try that next time you train any body part, really like pose, flex on the top of a bicep curl, pretend you're hitting a, a bicep pose. I mean, in weight that you're gonna do for 15 reps, you'll be dead at eight reps. You I gotta visualize, you. you gotta visualize like you're on stage and you're flexing. Like the, if you're an athlete, you compete, you should know like how you feel on stage. So I personally and him, I know, like we visualize like we're on stage and then we, then we like engage the muscle and then we pump isolated a pump and just focus on the same muscle and if you guys aren't competing visualize being at the beach visualize yeah. being <laughs> visualize being in the club flexing for the girl you know That's it's like it. <laughs> no one sees you in the street it doesn't say 300 pound bench press i curl 50 pounds they don't see that they just see the way you look right and i'm not saying we train for other people but most of us are training to look a certain way and we feel better about ourselves right so what would you rather do, lift 200 pounds and not look like it, or lift 20 pounds and have no injury, injuries and look like you, you lift 200 pounds? You know what I'm saying? I mean, my type of training is always high intensity and heavy weight, so there's no 20 pounds in my training, but my point is, you know, I wanna do the least amount of damage getting the most amount of results. I wanna do the least amount of work getting the most amount of results. Going into a diet and doing two hours of cardio and being a thousand calorie deficit is not smart. You wanna eat the most amount of food you can while getting leaner. You wanna do the least amount of work as possible while getting paid more. You know what I'm saying? Why, why do an hour of cardio if you're getting ripped on, on 30 minutes? So this is what I'm trying to explain to you guys and teach you guys shit that I've learned over 20, seven years now makes me feel old and a lot of mistakes that i've made i don't want you guys to make you know it's uh not too complicated keep it basic train hard eat and sleep and i promise you you'll grow um look at me bro i'm, I'm eating like four or five thousand calories and i'm training hard like four or five days a week yeah. and i'm still pretty lean like i mean it's not like i'm getting fat because i'm burning calories i'm pushing myself i'm lifting heavy i never did like 130 140 pound dumbbells overhead press but now i'm doing it so i'm i'm not like getting fat i'm eating all those calories and i'm utilizing it i'm pushing weight it's not like i'm in the gym i'm on my phone i'm talking to someone and that's it 40 50 minutes we're done we out of the gym absolutely he's pushing his limits and we expect you guys to do the same Follow us, subscribe if you haven't already, check out Bicky's Instagram and his YouTube channel. Comment below what you guys wanna see and hear from us next time. Um, till next time guys, keep at it, train hard, and don't slack.